In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Urban EDC F5.5. And at the end, I'm gonna tell you why you should or shouldn't buy it. Hey everyone, it's Wes Newman with The Pocket Perspective. Welcome back. And if you're new here, this channel focuses on reviews and how-tos of EDC gear, knives, flashlights, things like that. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Urban EDC F5.5. I'm gonna go over the specs, followed by the design and build quality. I'll weave my experiences of the knife throughout, finish with a quick summary, and then tell you why you should or shouldn't buy the knife. So jumping right into the specs. This is what I would consider a medium size, almost borderline medium sized knife. Specs say it has a blade length of 2.7 inches. When I measured, I'm getting close to uh, two and seven eighths of an inch, still sub three inch. And uh, that's supposed to be 68.5 millimeters. And really it looks like we're uh, probably about 60 or 73 millimeters. Close length is uh, reported to be four inches or 102 millimeters. Looks like it's just about that. And overall is uh, right at seven inches or 178 millimeters. Handle thickness is coming in about 0.46 inches uh, or 15 millimeters. Uh, blade stock on this is pretty chunky. It's uh, 0.15 inches or four millimeters. Weight on this is, uh, I can't really remember. I can't find the actual specs on the website that have taken this down. There's a couple different variants, but I believe when I saw it, it said two point something ounces, which I think was uh, incorrect. I think that was for the Micarta variant. So anyway, uh, we can weigh it on my scales. Coming in at 121 grams or 4.27 ounces. So it's a fairly chunky knife, uh, especially for the size of the blade. Uh, this is what I would consider a modified sheep's foot style blade has a flat grind on it, it's almost full. You can see there it uh, intercepts the opening hole about halfway. Uh, the steel on this one is M390, uh, has titanium handles, and it is a liner lock, so it's not a frame lock, even though it has titanium handles. Has a uh, right side clip up uh, tip. This is made in China. Uh, price on this variant is $249. And then the behind the edge thickness, get the behind the edge it's really thin so 15 thousandths before it jumped off there yeah yeah 15 thousandths so nice and thin grind behind the edge and uh this even though it's thick stock it's a pretty uh pretty high grind on this and so it, it, it's it's pretty slicey uh even even with the, the thick stock so those are your specs Let's do a few knife comparisons now. First up, standard uh, paramilitary two, and you can see that the PM2 is quite a bit larger. Uh, so I wouldn't consider these the same class of knives, but I wanted to start with that. And then it's uh, little brother, the PM3, which uh, is, is about the same size in blade length. Um, if you look here, the cutting edge is, is almost exactly the same, and so is the, the blade length, uh, but the uh, PM3, or I mean, the pair of three, uh, has a, a little bit uh, longer in overall length. And then the final knife to compare is the CRKT uh, Pilar. So this one's also designed by uh, Jesper Voxnays. And uh, I don't have a Pilarge. Uh, that's what it's called for short, which I think it would be uh, a lot closer to this. So you can see the, the Pilar is quite a bit smaller. And I don't have the, the Pilar 3 yet, uh, but those are your comparisons. Moving on to the design of the knife. The F5.5 is a smaller production version of Jesper Voxnase's custom F5. So this is a collaboration between Urban EDC Supply and Jesper Voxnase. Uh, Urban EDC Supply is uh, selling them and Jesper did the uh, design. And then they had the production done from uh, China somewhere. I'm not sure if it was Bestech or Riot. Uh, but aesthetically, you know, the knife looks like a Jesper Voxnase design and it looks a lot like, like his F5, uh, if you've seen it, just a smaller version. 
you know, um, you can definitely spot uh, Jesper's designs. He, you know, traditionally uses this modified sheep's foot and all of his lines always flow and they always, it's very ergonomic. Uh, typically his knives are a little bit smaller, uh, which uh, appeal to me a lot. And this one uh, is, is about the right size EDC for me. Um, and again, back to the lines, uh, you know, if you look at the arc here, it just, it's really smooth and then it transitions nicely into the sheep's foot here. And then the lines at the bottom of the handle look nice as well. And one thing that I have to give credit to Jesper on is he always pays attention to the knife in the closed position. And uh, um, not a lot of newer knife designers do that, or a lot of production companies don't do that. Uh, depending on the lock type, you know, sometimes you'll see like a snaggle tooth back here. Uh, that's what I call it anyway. Uh, when uh, when there's a chunk of the, the the blade showing right here that doesn't transition nicely into the, the handle. Uh, and then this flows nicely into um, the back of the, uh, the handle here. And so uh, that's one thing I do appreciate about about Jesper and uh, just as designs in general, they always flow and they always look nice aesthetically to me. Uh, the blade on this again is a modified sheep's foot and it's something that uh, Jesper uses quite a bit. Um, you know, it has this pill shaped opening hole, which he uses. He also uses this other um, uh, shape. It's got two different, I'm not sure the name of the, of the shape. It's got uh, two smaller, uh, it's got a smaller circle and a bigger one back here that they use on the uh, giant mouse knives. Uh, and so this this works well um, for finger flicking and for uh, opening via the thumb. And I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, with the action. Has a nice finger choil up here. And then it has some jimping that is a little bit farther forward than traditional ones. And you see Jesper do this a lot, especially on the giant mouse knives. And this one is in the perfect position for me. You know, finally, I can say... I really don't see a need to move the jimping. Uh, most times it's it's too far back. And then uh, I've seen some of the the giant mouse knives, it's just be it's too far forward, you know, because it's meant to be used in a pinch grip, but this one is just right. So um, yeah, not too hot, not too cold, <laughs> just right for me. Um, so I, I appreciate the, the attention to detail on this jimping. Um, and uh, you know, the blade finish on this is, a uh, just a, it's a belt finish here and then it's also uh, got horizontal lines uh, on the flats there you can see the markings on this knife there's really uh, not a whole lot you can see the blade steel is marked right there um, and that's it there's also on the liner these there's the urban edc uh, supply logo if you disassemble this knife you would see a marking there and so you know this knife is uh is super um, clean looking, which if you watched any of my reviews, you know that I like clean and simple. And uh, this one's almost uh, bland with all of the titanium. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that uh, in a minute, but um, yeah, so uh, the steel on this is M390, which is basically the current uh, selection for most premium knives. And it's really good. Um, you know, those, those, three, those three steels, um, you know, CPM 20 CV, CTS 204 P they're all about chemically the same. And there it's that Goldilocks, uh, you know, it's got uh, good edge retention, um, decent uh, toughness for stainless. And then the corrosion resistance is really good on this. And so, um, I, I really like this steel. It's one of my favorites for folders and, uh, you know, it's kind of to be expected on a price uh, on a knife of this price. Um, there's also, before I get too far, there's also variants of this knife um, that uh, that uh, you can get or that you could get. Uh, they came in Micarta, both green and natural, and uh, they're all sold out. This one's sold out too. I'm not sure if they're going to do additional runs, uh, but they're at the time of this filming, they have a carbon fiber variant uh, that is 275, I believe, that is uh, that is still um, for sale but it has LMAX steel. And you saw some of the earlier runs of this have LMAX as well. So I'm not sure why, why they're picking LMAX or M390. If it's just, um, if they initially had, had, or did it in LMAX and then switched to M390. Um, I find that to be a little bit strange that they would go back and forth in between those steels. And then there's also, I believe there's another drop coming that's titanium handles and damascus steel, um, which I can't remember the price on it, but it's getting on up there. 
And, uh, you know, I haven't talked about uh, Damascus a lot or Damasteel um, in, in any of my reviews. Uh, Damascus doesn't do anything for me. It's just, it's just too busy for me. And uh, typically you're, you're giving up, uh, you know, some sort of performance in the steel, um, depending on what they use uh, for the, the middle layer. But yeah, it just really doesn't do anything for me. Um, neither does uh, Mokutai or any of the crazy uh, uh, meteorite or any of those other type of materials. Um, you know, I'm kind of a micarta or titanium or G10 kind of person with good quality steel. So moving on to um, the action of this knife, it is really good. I mean, it's it's almost full drop shut. Um, it just takes a little bit of a shake to get it to, to drop, but the middle finger flick on this knife is perfect for me. I don't have to hunt for this hole at all. I will say that um, the, the thumb flick isn't as good as the, I just missed it there, uh, isn't as good as the, the middle finger flick. And I've, and I've found that out to be true um, for these oblong holes. I find that the, the, re the regular spidey hole works better for the thumb flick. And, uh, but these oblong holes work fantastic for middle finger flick. And that's the way that I traditionally open this knife. There, I just missed it, of course. Um, but it, it works good. Um, you know, if you have bigger fingers, you may have a harder time uh, getting into that hole there, but there's plenty of clearance here um, with the way that the handles are shaped. And again, the action on this is really good. It's running on uh, bearings, uh, ceramic bearings, ceramic detent. Um, it's super smooth in here. And so the action on this is, is, is top notch for sure. Uh, it's not full drop shut, um, but it's, it's really close. Uh, it, it, once this breaks in a little bit more, maybe it will be full drop shut, uh, but it is a, a bit of a smaller blade, so it doesn't have, it is heavy, but it doesn't have a ton of mass there to, to make it drop uh, shut all the way. Uh, moving on to the handles on this, uh, this is full titanium here. So you can see it's, um, again, this is a um, liner lock, um, and, but it's, you know, traditionally titanium handles have a frame lock. And so this has actually got liners in it. And interesting enough, um, when you take this apart, it actually has full liners. And so uh, I guess they did that to make it easy to produce because they have all these different scale options. And so the, this titanium, even on the show side, has a liner in it, which I thought was interesting. Um, of course, that's that, I guess that's why this is a, a liner lock as well instead of a frame lock. But that kind of adds to the heft of this. Um, you know, it's not skeletonized. See if we can get in there. There you can see the liner edge. Um, so it's full titanium uh, scales, titanium backspacer, titanium clip, all titanium hardware. And this, so this knife is just begging to be customized. And uh, I'm definitely gonna do something interesting with this one. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what I wanna do, but you know, it's just a, it's just a blank canvas right now. And it's just, just begging to be uh, customized. So I'm looking forward to, to doing something to this one. Um, looking at the lock here, you can see the, um, that there's a bit of a cutout here and some jimping, and I don't have any problem whatsoever disengaging this lock. And so it works really well. Um, lefty, uh, I'm not as good for sure. So, um, you know, it's not set up lefty friendly, uh, due to the clip, but, um, it's, it's not as easy to disengage for me left-handed at all. Um, so that you, you may want more, of, a little more of a clearance um, there if you're if you're left-handed. Uh, but there is a bit of a cutout, and uh, you can see there some um, chamfering, and then the jimping there. And uh, you can see the lockup. I'm, I'll talk a little bit more in the build quality, but it's early lockup for sure. Um, the the the. The hardware on this is all T8, which I really do appreciate. So it's T8, uh, you know, pivot and uh, the backspacer screws. And then the the scale screws are T8 as well. Um, and it's, again, all titanium. I did find, though, that, uh, you know, when disassembling this um, or adjusting the pivot, you definitely need uh, two drivers uh, because it wants to spin. Uh, just, just a general comment there. Uh, moving on to the ergos, 
this knife fits my hand perfectly. So I've got, you know, medium sized hands and you can see my pinky just lands right there on the end. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, this finger choil where you can choke up and do a little more fine tasks. Um, you know, this, this is uh, on the smaller size. Um, so if you have great big uh, bear paws, you might find, uh, you know, back here to be a little bit too small for you. Um, but I find it to work out perfect for me. Um, you know, I, one thing I did find a bit uncomfortable is reverse draw. Um, it's just, it's just not comfortable at all. Lots of pokey spots here, the clips getting in my hand. And then this, um, part of the handle there is just, just digging into my hand. Of course, I very seldom use reverse draw, but I do like to, you know, hold it in multiple positions and see if it's going to work out or not. But all the other hand positions, the typical ones work extremely well for me. And so the ergonomics on this are very well thought out. Nice, large chamfering all the way around. So these edges are nice and broken. So ergos are, are, are pretty good. I will say though, um, the clip uh, can be a bit uncomfortable in the hand. Um, it's just not melting in there. It's not, it's not a super big hotspot or anything, um, but I think that it, it needs a little bit of work. Um, it's not bad, um, but it's just, it's just not super comfortable. And part of it is, I think, uh, how far this comes up. And uh, this, this clip just is so far up above um, the handle here. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, transition down nice and even. Although I will say it's got a lot of uh, area in here for thicker pockets. Um, you can also see though that the, the clip is, um, is countersunk, but the screws are not. I mean, that's a major miss in my opinion. What they've done is they've used the same screws as the backspacer here. And so I, I think that, you know, that's a miss. They should have used countersunk screws here too. And it would have been, there's not, I mean, there's tons of room there you can see, but it would have been a, a better clip or a better execution if they would have used uh, countersunk screws. But all in all, um, I do like this shorter style clip. I don't like super long clips. Um, uh, and this one uh, seems to hit, hit pretty well on my hand. Um, it's just every once in a while, you know, I, I can feel it there. Uh, you know, as far as carrying it in the pocket, it carries very nicely. Uh, obviously it's a little bit wider knife, um, but uh, the clip works well. It's not full deep carry. You know, we're talking, you know, a quarter inch or three eighths inch. So it's almost full deep. And while, while I'm showing you this, I forgot to mention the lanyard hole. I was talking about the handle. You can see there, it's got the integrated lanyard hole in the backspacer. And it's really, it's, it's unobtrusive and not in the way at all. And so um, Jesper typically does a pretty good job with his lanyard holes. You know, I, I could do without them all together, but uh, I know some people like them. Uh, so yeah, um, so uh, back, to, back to carry here. Let me show you what this looks like in the pocket. Okay, here is a uh, front right pocket. And you can see here that, um, you know, the clip is, it sticks out a little bit. And it's, I've, I've found myself scratching myself on it just a little bit. And so I think that the, they could, again, stand to bring this tip down just a little bit and maybe break these edges off just a little bit more. Uh, it's just, you know, like when you're grazing it a little bit, it just feels a bit sharp to me. Uh, but um, it does carry fine in the pocket. Uh, obviously there's no flipper tab, so there's really no problems getting my hand in or out. I don't hit it on the, the flipper tab because it's not there. I will say though um, that this jimping right here on the back, um, you know, you do rub your hand on it uh, pretty hard if, you're, if your pockets are tight. So um, I could probably do without that rear jimping. Then of course, you know, uh, I usually carry it back here uh, because I don't like putting my hand down in my pocket with my knife. I just like being able to, to grab it and access it and have my front right pocket uh, fully accessible. And so I typically carry my knives back here and then carry a smaller one in my fifth pocket. Uh, and so talking about fifth pocket carry, this knife is close to being a fifth pocket knife. You could, um, in this pocket, you could drop it in there almost, um, but it's not quite. So it's, I don't think it's a fifth pocket uh, carry knife. It's just a little bit too big. So, but overall the carry is good on this knife.
Moving on to build quality. Overall, I would say this is excellent. So if we look at the blade, uh, the grind lines line up perfectly uh, on both sides. Uh, plunge line looks perfect, just like it should. Meets up at the same spot here on the spine. Let's see here, always something to check, make sure it's gonna meet up perfectly. Uh, you can see that um, it's got a nice uh, finish, uh, belt finish on the on the um, on the grind, and then a horizontal uh, finish on the flats, which uh, always looks good. Looks like a lot more people are starting to do that on production knives now. The uh, titanium, um, I believe this is some sort of um, bead blast. Not sure. It doesn't look like stone wash to me, uh, but overall the finish looks good. You can see there, I'm already starting to pick up snail trails on it. Um, it's gonna be pretty snail trail prone, uh, this type of finish, uh, but that's just to be expected with titanium. I will say um, this clip is a little bit flexy and you can see it's already starting to, um, you know, rub a spot there on the, on the clip. It doesn't bother me, but it's probably gonna bother some other people. I just wanted to mention it, but uh, the milling looks really good on the, on the titanium. Uh, this chamfering looks good. The uh, the lockup already mentioned it. It's early on this knife. You can see it's looks like it's about 20%. Um, so I think it's I think it's fine. Uh, the centering on this knife uh, is perfect. Uh, I have disassembled it already, but it was it was perfectly centered when I when I got it. And then sharpening is is good on this knife. It's not perfect. Um, if I can, I can get it there. So you can see it's a little bit wider at the heel. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that than at the tip. Maybe that's not an artifact of sharpening, but I just wanted to talk about it for a second. There we go. So you can see it's just a little bit focus. little bit uh, wider at the heel than at the tip. Um, and while I'm on that subject, um, this plunge line, it's got, in my opinion, too big of a transition. And it transitions right into the heel of this blade. And I think um, they should have transitioned it, you know, a little farther into here. Because as you start to sharpen this, this heel sharpening is definitely gonna start to get wider and wider and wider, especially on like a fixed angle system. Uh, just due to the fact that this this transition area basically it's it's wider or it's not, not ground as thin right there Let's see if we can get it to focus so you can see at the heel it's you can, it's already starting to get thicker um, so this this plunge line in my opinion they should have transitioned it you know right into there instead of taking it all the way out to the heel because um, as you start to sharpen this knife it's going to start climbing up here and it's going to look wider and wider at the heel than it will uh, at the tip or any, uh, even in the middle. So I would ding them a little bit on that. I don't, that's probably design versus build quality, but I did want to bring it up. So sharpening is, is, is pretty good. Uh, it did come extremely sharp. And, you know, like I said, it was like uh, uh, that uh, 15,000. So it's definitely got a laser edge on it. But overall, I'm really happy with the execution of this knife. While we're looking at build quality, let's go ahead and Rockwell test the blade. Okay, now that I've got this apart, I just wanted to show you a couple things. Um, take a look at this detent track. I mean, it is so close to the edge of this blade. So close. Of course, it doesn't take much. It just needs a little bit of steel there to ride on. But uh, one thing that I would have liked to have seen is a, is a detent ramp at this price point. I think it would make the action even smoother on this knife. Uh, and then here are those full liners I was talking about see there and then here is that uh, combination urban EDC and uh, uh, Vox uh, logo so I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, test this uh, just right here on the other side opposite of this detent track uh, because I that's usually hidden so go ahead and get this set up By the preload, reset the scale, 
apply the 150 kilogram force. Roll it back. And it looks like we're about 59. I would have liked to have seen that higher. Optimally, I would like to see it 61, but this one's at 59. So, not terrible. There's a dent, but uh, it would have been nice to see this uh, at, uh, at 61. So there's the Rockwell. In summary, I think the Urban EDC F5.5 has a ton of things going for it. You know, it's been designed by Jesper Voxnes and he is a master at his craft. He's been designing things for years and he's really got things dialed in. Uh, you know, this is um, about the perfect size EDC for me. It's got premium steel, premium handles, um, you know, titanium hardware, uh, ceramic uh, bearings and detent. Um, you know, the, the only two couple small things that uh, I think they would, I'd like to see changed is the clip uh, with the countersunk screws. And then this plunge line right here, I uh, would like to see it move back a little bit. Uh, but those, you know, those are kind of nitpicky. Um, you know, this is again, like a blank canvas and uh, this is definitely a keeper for me and I'll be customizing it. And it's definitely something that I would recommend to others. Moving on to why you should or shouldn't buy the knife. You should buy it if you're looking for a hardworking sub three inch folder. You should buy it if you're looking for a knife with a great middle finger flick. And finally, you should buy it if you like box designs. And why you shouldn't buy it. You shouldn't buy it if you don't like smaller knives. You shouldn't buy it if you're looking for something lightweight. And finally, you shouldn't buy it if you want something made in the US. Let me know down in the comments what you think about the F5.5 or just box knives in general. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care and have a great day.